you have time. You have the knowledge and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. One day you're gonna realize your life is yours and there's a lot of people important to you that surround it, but ultimately it's yours. Then you must decide where you want to invest this life. Invest in something worthwhile. You have to picture yourself there. Wherever it is, you've got to picture yourself there. All right, the next step is you've got to believe it. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. They were going to make a change and then they made it. And this is your moment. It's not tomorrow. It's not next year. It's not when you're gonna graduate. It's right here, right now. And every choice you make, you're impacting that thing. We're gonna be lying. You know, when a lion is injured, when a lion is bleeding, he licks his wounds and he keeps walking. Your time is one of the most powerful tools you will ever have. Lay hold of it. You lay hold of it. And when that thing tells you to quit, you look at it in his eye and say, I ain't going nowhere. I will break you before you break me. You will be like a shark. You will think like a shark. That you can't go backwards, and if you stop swimming, you will die. Should life knock you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. This is the year of the word. Act like you hear me. This is the year of the word. This is the year of the word. Act like you. The moment and the time for you to change your life is now. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth and always feel that your life has ultimate significance. You choose what you're looking for because what you look for, you find. That's how life works. Make good choices, great things happen. But you've got to believe in you. So I believe. When I look at people, I always ask the question, I say, man, tell me what Nike stands for. They said, oh, Ink, that's easy, just do it. I said, tell me what Adidas stands for. Oh, Ink, that's easy, man, impossible is nothing. I said, now tell me what you stand for. When people look at you, do they think excuses? When people look at you, do they think victory? When people look at you, do they think that's a person that's going to give me everything they got, not on some days, but on every day, and it's not going to be predicated upon if I feel like it, because I think we all know if we only worked on the days when we felt like it, none of us would get much accomplished. I'm talking about the real level of commitment, not the commitment that falls in line if everything goes right. I'm speaking of the commitment that says, I am going to stay true to what I said I would do long after the mood that I've said it in his life. See, most people, ladies and gentlemen, are stoppable. Most people, all you have to do is tell them no. All you have to do is make it inconvenient for them. All you have to do is make it difficult for them and they're stuck. See, when you go to get your goal, don't think that all you have to do is think positive and everything's going to work out okie dokie for you. When you go to get your goal, you are sending a telegram to Murphy's Law to visit you personally. You thought you was just going to have a dream and a goal, and you were just going to wake up and just walk into the sunset. You're like, dream, boom. It don't work like that. You have a dream, and then life pumps you. Life pumps you and say, do you really want this? 
you're going to lose friends. Do you really want this? Do you really want this? Cousins going to abandon you. People that you used to be like this with going to think you bougie and don't want to deal with you. It's a part of it, but I paid too much. If I was going to quit, I would have quit in the abandoned building when I wanted to commit suicide and take my life. I should have quit when I heard my voice say, your mama don't want you, your daddy don't want you, take your life. I got through that, so why I'm going to quit over an F on a grave? Come on. And so I'm telling y'all, you have come too far to quit now. You have invested too much to quit now. You have lost too much to quit now. Don't cry about it. Don't whine about it. Get a reward for your pain. And so by being committed to everything that I started, I finished it. It built a certain type of spirit. It built a certain type of mentality. It built a certain type of individual. And so now I couldn't quit even if I wanted to. I couldn't stop even if I wanted to. I had too much sweat equity in my life and everything that I was doing. You're too close to quit now. You got to take another lap. You got to take another lap because you never know. This might be the one. You can't stop because you're tired. You can't stop because you got your feelings hurt. You got to take another lap. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. You're going to make it. You're going to do it. You got an unstoppable fire. Come on, take another lap. Don't you stop. Don't stop walking. The people who dream and those people who dream big have a different kind of life than the people who don't dream. If you do not do what you're doing right now well, your goal is just going to be a fancy desire, isn't it? Whether it's fear or anxiety, whatever it may be, I believe that every single person who's going out to chase their dreams has those voices in their head. I think it's part of the human experience. Stay strong, have faith, keep pushing through. I've said this before and, and I'm living proof of it is that on the other side of your struggle is something good. On your other side of your struggle is something better. On the other side of your struggle is some sort of success. So I'm here to tell you today that you can have anything you want, be anyone you want, but you're gonna have to work. See, dreams, aspirations, they're not easily obtained. But one of the hardest things to do is to keep going, is to keep chasing. You don't realize your dreams are so important because your DNA, who you are as a person, is wrapped up in your dreams. Go after this thing called life. Don't look back and have regrets. Understand that you're at a place and a position right now when hard work and valuing people, nothing can stop you, I promise you. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. So your dream will cause you to go insane. Because what you want, it hunts you every single night. See the big dogs, they won't give you the opportunity. You're going to have to take it. Keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up eight. No matter what happens, you will not quit because quitting is not an option because you have a why, you have a passion, you have a purpose. The people that are running after their dream know they're going to have hard times. They keep on running because they're saying within themselves, I'm the one, I'm the one. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. I have a dream. Your DNA is in your dream. This is your moment. And you got to look in the mirror and believe that. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So take advantage of today. Take advantage of tomorrow. Take advantage of every opportunity that you have to do what you want in life. It's time to ignite the dream. It's time for you to stop settling for just money and really open your game up. Dreams require sacrifices. Like, my city's expensive. Move. My car payments are high. Sell your car and take the bus. Yeah. This is dreams we're talking about. We're talking about dreams. Success can be a lonely road. It can be a tough road. It can be a hard road. 
it's not for everyone. Those who follow others like sheep will never know who they truly are. Only those who follow their own path can discover their true potential. Those who fly alone have the strongest wings. Those who walk alone have the strongest direction. The rest will always be in need of others for their survival. They will always need attention, need recognition to survive. I am at peace alone, needing no attention, no recognition, and still I thrive. I'm not saying those who have support are weak. I'm not saying you must go at it alone to gain strength. This is just for those who have fought battles alone. Those who have felt like they don't fit in. Those who have never had support in anything they do. All of those who feel no one believes in them. You don't need them to believe in you if you believe in you. You don't need their support if you've got your own back. The best part is when you truly live the life you want to live, when you speak your truth, when you embrace who you are, then you gain real respect and real love. People love those who have the guts to be themselves, those who have the courage to follow their heart. Why? It's rare. Why? Because most people wish they could do the same. Show them the way. Keep going. Believe in yourself. It will all come good in the end. And when it does, you won't have only inspired yourself to be more. You will have inspired so many others. I had to learn to fight alone. And because of that, I am strong alone. I am strong. Full stop. I developed inner strength that can't be broken. I am unbreakable. Because of the pain, I am strong. Because of the struggle, I have character most will never know. I appreciate others more than ever. I have more compassion than ever. I had to go deep into the darkness. Now I have more depth. Now I can see clearer. I had to face huge internal challenges. Now I can defeat any challenge. I will destroy every challenge. I am proud of who I have become. I am proud I have overcome. I am proud I kept going. I am proud of who I am, who I have become. I am proud I stay true to myself because now I can live as myself with respect from others and most importantly, pride and respect from myself. see every day people with this mentality that the world owes them something. The simple answer here is that you need to work harder and faster. There's really nothing else. Life is a series of choices. At that moment, that choice was, quite honestly, hard work. Put your head down and do the training and take the pain and eventually it's going to pay off. And on those days where you just gotta get through an impossible to-do list, you really have to feel that if you put your head down and you take the pain, it's going to pay off. And since I'm going to do this, I'm gonna harness my will. And I'm not gonna let anything stop me. I deserve this. Hard work is the most precious asset you have. You know, while the other guy's sleeping, I'm working. While the other guy's eating, I'm working. But it don't work if you don't work. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. There is no in-between. You're either growing or you are decaying. If you want something, you have got to be relentless. This is a winner's quality. You have that quality within you. 
When you're hungry, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the odds. If you want to be an anomaly, you've got to act like one. Why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? You said your goal was to pass every class. You said your goal was to never again finish last. Most people, what they're doing is they're all at this mountain called success and they're all strolling around the bottom of this mountain and they're looking for an elevator to carry them to the top. See, they haven't realized yet that there is no open elevator and I'm already halfway up the stairs. I'm not getting up on time. I'm not going to work on time. I'm not putting in 120% when I'm at work. I let me down. All right, if you work hard and you never give up, you can literally achieve anything. Break it down and add just a little more effort. Add just a little more focus. Add just a little more time management. Add just a little more patience. Add just a little more studying. Add just a little more listening. Add just a little more discipline. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. You will fail your way to greatness. Waiting miraculously to when the calendar flips to start making your life better is silly at best and pisses me off at worst. It is your life. Nobody else can tell you what's best for you and only you will have to deal with the consequences. As you go through the challenges of life and you look at it and embrace whatever comes to you, don't run from it, step toward it. Don't try and duck it like most people do. See, most people want it easy. See, if you easy come, easy what? Easy go. When you actually decide to make a change in your life, whether about weight or job or going out with somebody or relationships, that's when you actually pull it off. It's religion, not talent. You should never want to hang with a person if they don't add value into your life. You should never want material stuff that don't add value into your life. You should never want to worship your other people's dream more than your dream. This means you got to work. This means you have to grind. You got to grind when you do not feel like it. And this in all areas in life. School, sports, your religion, consistency. It's the tunnel to greatness. There are few people who have decided within themselves, I'm going to make it. Some people aren't waiting to be cut. Some people are moving on their own because they feel within themselves, I've got what it takes to make it. If you're growing up with nothing, and you're growing up with, without, I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to say these words. I want you to say that I am buoyant. I speak it to existence that you will understand that you are a billionaire. I changed my name to billionaire when I was broke. You'll always be what you decide to be. My freshman year, I don't play a lick. And before I knew it, I lost my mindset again. I began to recalibrate. You know, everybody doesn't play in the NBA. I'll graduate in four years. You know what? I just go get a good job. It's okay. It's okay. And the end of my freshman year, my daddy called me on the phone. He asked me a question. He said, son, you're not playing. Why not? Politics, dad. It's political. My father asked me a question. He says, how did your coach get paid, son? I said, dad, he gets paid to win. He says, okay, son. If your coach gets paid to win, won't he play the players and give him the best chance to win? He said, son, you got recruited, you took all your visits, you chose Minnesota. You took your time and you chose Minnesota. You told me that you're going to turn that program around. You told me you're going to graduate in four years. You told me you're going to make more money in business than you did in sports. One of the core values of our training and development called family was accountability. That was a core value of that training and development organization called the Bond Family Accountability. He said, so go back and do what you said you're going to do. My father reminded me of what I said I was going to do. 
I went back to my coach's office. I said, coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He looked confused. This is what I told him. I'm going to become somebody different. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? I'm taking this thing to the next level. We about to rise up. So for you to be passionate, your logic and your emotions need to be intertwined. See, some of you guys have the intellect and some of you guys have the passion, but you have to have both to be successful in this business. Sharks are hunters and predators. They never stop swimming. In fact, if a shark stops swimming, it will die. If a shark goes backwards, it will die. Think like a shark, act like a shark, and behave like a shark. Can I ask you a question right now? Can I ask you a real question? Not your neighbor, I'm talking to you. What kind of student are you right now in life? You're in charge of your promotion. If you do five million and want to get to 10, you're in charge. In order for you to rise up, you better take your game to the next level. Your mindset needs to go to the next level. Your information needs to go to the next level. Your relationships need to go to the next level. Take your money and get information and access and you will get good habits and good rituals and you will go to the next level. Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He said, you can't run, you can't jump, you can't dribble, you can't shoot, and you can't rebound, son. Next year, I'll be your most improved player. I'm going to think, I'm going to execute, and I'm going to win. I'm going to think, I'm going to execute, and I'm going to win. I'm going to execute what I've been trained to do. I'm connected to a shark. I'm connected to the greatest training organization in the world. And when I get home, I'm going to become somebody different. What do I need to do? You need to have an honest self-assessment about what your weaknesses are. And that's how you get to the next level. My sophomore year rolls around. We go all the way to the Sweet 16, and I'm the top six man in the country. I go back to my coach. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? The list got shorter. The next year, we went all the way to the Elite Eight. We were one shot away from the Final Four, and I was the top six man in the country. I carved out a niche. And that's what impact players do. They make their community better. They make their city better. They make their town better. They make realtors better. Be an impact player and anyone in your life, if they need a shark, you become their shark. All I had to do was have one good year and I walked right into the NBA. My senior year, everything lines up. But the first game of my senior year, I break my foot. I come back in six weeks and I break my foot a second time. In my mind, my college career was over and my NBA dreams were dead. I have a seven points a game. I got offered a $75,000 job because one of our season ticket holders liked me. Right before I took the job, my daddy called me on the phone. He would always ask the right questions at the right time. He said, you had a tough year, son, what's next? I said, Daddy, I'm going to be a hospital administrator, $75,000 job. He said, not bad, son, but can I ask you a question? Do you believe you're an NBA player? Come on now, Dad. I only have seven points a game, Dad. We're not like these other black families that just need basketball, Dad. We're educated, Dad. We're not dependent on basketball, Dad. We're balanced, Dad. We're educated, Dad. I got a $75,000 job, Dad. Do you believe, son? He was checking my mindset. He was checking to see, was I thinking like an A student? Those are falling back into that C mindset. Do you believe you're an NBA player? I said, yeah, Dad, I do. He said, well, go for it, son, but, but Dad, I never started in college, but, but, but. My father said, you told me, son, that you're gonna turn that program around and you did it from the bench, son. You told me you're gonna graduate in four years, son. The average student graduating five. I'm proud of you. But you told me that you're going to play in the NBA. And you told me you're going to make more money in business than you did in sports. Do you believe you're an NBA ball player? I do.
do, Daddy? Go for it, son. Go for it. I go back to my coach's office, and I said, Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He teared up. I teared up. He said, I'll be honest with you, son. When I recruited you, I heard you as a mama's boy. But you're not. In fact, you're one of the toughest players I've ever had. I'm a Hall of Fame motivational speaker. I go all over the world running my mouth. But he gave me the greatest compliment I've ever received. He said, you're just like your daddy. My daddy was a shark, and I was a sucker fish. But that moment was my opportunity to turn into a shark myself. If you hang around sharks long enough, it will transform your mindset, and I promise you, you will be like a shark. You will think like a shark. And you can't go backwards, and if you stop swimming, you will die. Brian Buffini, he can't go backwards, and if he stops swimming, he will die. So ladies and gentlemen, you're connected to the right shark. All you need to do is be a good sucker fish. Success is all around you. Just pay attention. Every time you leave a business meeting, consciously and subconsciously, that person is debriefing you. Are you likable? Do you brighten up a room when you enter? Or do you brighten up a room when you leave? Are you good with people? And don't you ever be a Sarah Parasite, which means don't you ever come to this conference and go back home and do nothing and then claim, oh, I tried and it didn't work. No! My college basketball coach said, son, I think you should be a motivational speaker. I said, coach, I can talk the rest of my life. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? He said, if you do these two things, you are play in the NBA. You gotta better shoot the three-point shot with range. And you gotta lose about 15 pounds because you don't pass the eyeball test. When I talk about the eyeball test, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. He says, the NBA thinks you're a football player trying to play basketball. 
you got to lose weight to change the perception. I lost 15 pounds and I became the first ever undrafted rookie free agent in the history of the NBA to start opening night.